and welcome to this special discussion from Bengaluru. Make in India. Now that's a much talked about concept, a much talked about program. But what is the relevance of Make in India for Indian science? What really needs to be done to make scientific research and science in India that much healthier? Joining us to discuss today, we have a great panel. We have Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, Chairperson and Managing Director of Viacon. And our Narayan Murthy, he is President Board of Trustees of the Infosys Science Foundation. Professor B. Balaram, a biochemist and a former director of the Indian Institute of Science. And Professor Satyajit Mayer from the National Center for Biological Sciences and an early winner of the Infosys Prize for Life Sciences. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Now, make in India. I think most recently that whole Mangalyan project was very exciting for all involved. That spacecraft being put in orbit around Mars on the first attempt by India. And although we try not to go too much by foreign commendation, Time magazine is also listed as among the 25 great inventions of 2014. And has mentioned as well that India brought it in with a budget of less than the film Gravity. They managed to do that. What kind of difference, to start on a positive note, what kind of difference do you think Mangalyan made to the feeling of researchers, scientists, of achievement in India? Kiran? Well, I think it brought in a huge amount of uh, euphoria in the scientific world, in space research. I think young people at least started understanding the importance of, uh, you know, innovation, research. And I think uh, this Mangalyan success was certainly something that was celebrated and something that we need to leverage really to really inculcate this spirit of scientific research and scientific curiosity and also the realization and recognition that India does have the scientific you know, potential to innovate and to do great things. And to me, the underlying message is that India has a unique opportunity to position itself as a country that can innovate in a very affordable, cost competitive way. You know, I may be somewhat heretic. To me, Mangalyani is not so much the result of leading edge research. Okay. I think there's an old uh, okay. uh, technology. What Mangalyan did was to raise the confidence of Indians that we can execute projects well. Okay. To me, Mangalyan is a very good example of frugal engineering on <laughs> one, one hand. Second, a wonderful example of how you can execute a, a such a precision oriented project well. How is it perceived in the scientific field? Was it, as he said, not such new science after all? Or do you feel it was a sense of encouragement for young researchers? Now, you know, the Mangalyan moment is rather like India winning the World Cup <laughs> final <laughs> or when Abhinav Bindra won the gold medal, it gave all of us a great cake. Okay. And watching it live on TV, I think would have excited uh, almost anybody who was uh, had their sets on. E even cynics who question the cost <laughs> of space program. E even cynics who question the co cost of the space program. And I think it's a technological achievement. Okay. It says that how far Indian engineering and Indian technology has moved. Uh, there is a difference between uh, the kind of basic science that is practiced in academic institutions and the kind of targeted uh, engineering success that is achieved by the space program. But I think there's no doubt that uh, Mangalyan was a shot in the arm for everybody. Professor Mayer, your thoughts? It wasn't really a, a matter of you know, excellent science, but it was a matter of execution and fabulous engineering, affordable as, as well. But what I'm really happy about is that it worked. Now, had it not worked, you know, I, I think, first of all, we may not be having this conversation, but, uh, but there might have been repercussions in the context of the, the, you know, the support that science desperately needs today. When I spoke to Professor Kasturi Rangan, he did believe that there was a lot of you know, innovation that went into that project. There was a lot of very complex mathematical and computational mm -hmm. science that required to understand the, com you know, the very, very complex alignment of gravitational forces. Some of it was unknown. 
And I think to that effect, I would say that there was, there was a lot of science and computational science which was involved in that mission. I mean, in this case, we can't say it's not rocket science because it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. No, but like Mangalyan, another buzzword or buzz phrase was make in India. What does it mean to research science in the country? Does it mean anything? Or is it is research science in one corner and the whole make in India hype on the other? Professor Mayer? But I, I think the connection between um, innovation that Kiran was just talking about and uh, research uh, is something that um, <clears throat> and needs to be established yeah. in India if we are going to truly make in India. Yeah. If, if research can contribute to what is being made yeah. in India, that would be, I think, something s substantial that okay. make in India could bring. But the quantum of research that's happening in this country mm. is so low um, in terms of contributing to the possibility of innovation and research, okay. uh, innovation and make in India, that unless we grow that, uh, that sector, it's, it's not going to truly be make in India. We will bring in things from the outside and, okay. and then innovate. Yes, I think make in India is uh, the latest in a long list of slogans that have been coined by people who make opinion. Okay. Uh, I don't think science really uh, is directly connected with okay. the Make in India uh, slogan. You would realize this by things which have happened recently. Uh, the media, for example, views science and technology as the uh, least important of all subjects <laughs> uh, uh, to which politicians aspire. The last two occasions when uh, a minister has been appointed in the science and technology ministry, yes. The press has always viewed it as a demotion. And uh, okay. as a result, this really tells you what the public perception yes. of science and technology is in India. Okay. And I suspect that this perception is also shared by the people who run the countries. I think there's something similar with the Women and Child Development Ministry, <laughs> which is also a very unfortunate <laughs> thing. Is funding a big issue? Do you think this whole focus on getting things done in India, whether it's research, whether it's manufacturing, but here we're talking about research. Has it led to greater funding? Do you think that the Indian government is really putting its money where its mouth is and giving greater funding to research and industry? Kiran, what, what, what do you feel? Well, you know, if you want to go by statistics, I think India invests about 0.6% of its GDP in research. 0.6%. You know compared to, say, 3% in the U.S. Okay. and maybe 6% in Scandinavia and what have you. But that's not the point. I think I really want to take off from where Professor Balram made that very, very poignant comment that we just don't, you know, focus on science and technology and give it its due position and respect in society. And I think that's what I think is the real flawed uh, aspect of what we're talking about. Science and technology has been relegated to a very secondary position because I think even when you look at young aspiring minds mm. and you ask them, would you like to be a scientist? I think you will find very few takers. I always sort of have this great altercation with uh, media saying you don't cover science enough. You don't educate people mm. enough about science and arouse the scientific curiosity in minds because I think the one thing India really suffers from, because as you said, what is the connect between scientific research and make in India? It's about taking ideas and scientific concepts and scientific yes. ideas to the market. Okay, that's from an industry point of view, that's yes. what it is. Because it starts with scientific hmm. concepts. You know, basic research is so very, very important to basically breed, um, you know, applied science. Has there been any change recently? Is there more funding given now to research institutes, to government research institutes like yours? See, funding has increased steadily over the years. So over the last 10 years, I think funding has gotten better. But the problem in India always is that it's not the funds hmm. which are allocated to, a to an area, but the entire governmental machinery by which these funds are dispersed okay. and utilized in institutions is uh, a very, very cumbersome process. All right. So very often in India, I think we get much less value 
for the money that we are spending. We take much longer periods of time in order to spend money that is allocated to us. Uh, government departments function slowly. Institutions, and I can say this, also are to blame. They also function slowly. So I wouldn't say that funding is the only thing okay. that is going to improve uh, the state of science in India. We need more funding, but we need a lot of other things. Too. I would think if there was far greater autonomy of functioning for scientific research institutions okay. within the budgets that they have, uh, I think it would make a lot of difference. Do you feel that whether it's when industry is funding you, perhaps industry does, you do have some collaborations, does it fund for pure research or is it really only when it comes to things which can be applied? Commercially. We have sort of open-ended funding that's coming for completely blue skies work as, um, <clears throat> as um, private support, which is very recent and extremely welcome. Quantum of funds for uh, basic research, let's say in a, in a country like America or, or even mm. Japan, is, is huge. It's, um, so we, we think that a lot of, there's a lot of money going into basic research from the government okay. from in, in the United States. But about 70% of funding, I think, comes from industry. So for it's basic more private research. funding. So there's a lot of private funding States. for for basic research. What would you say it is in India in terms of? Uh, I'd say less than a percent. Thank you. We'll take a short break now. But when we get back, we'll have some <coughs> questions for the panelists from the students and young professionals present in the audience as we talk about Make in India and what it means for Indian science.